We will rescue Lagos, says PDP governorship candidate in Lagos State, Olajide Adediran. And controversies mar APC's primaries ahead of the local government elections. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. Abdulaziz Olajide Adediran, the People's Democratic Party PDP governorship candidate in Lagos State, has said he would focus on taking development to the inner parts of the state and give priority to education in order to reduce the number of out-of-school children in the state if elected as governor in 2023. Now, the governorship candidate added that for more than two decades now, Lagos has had only one governor, adding that it is time that the state gets the second governor. Jando is the main challenger to the candidates of the ruling All Progressive Congress APC and incumbent Lagos State Governor Babajide Somolu in 2023 election. Now he defeated from he defected from the APC to the PDP last year after complaining of marginalization in the party. Well, joining us to discuss this and his plans for Lagos State is Binga Ogunleye. He's a spokesman for Jandog Gubernatorial Campaign Council. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ogunleye, for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Great. Let's start. Good evening. Let's start by looking at um, the momentum that the Jandor campaign is gathering, if there be any. Um, now, we also know that um, the dust has settled on who he picked as his running mate. And now Lagosians are looking uh, to see how uh, the PDP is gathering momentum. So let's talk. Uh, has there been um, a blueprint out yet on how the campaign and, of course, what the plans of your governorship candidate is for Lagos State. Well, thank you so much. Um, there is, um, of course, there is a manifesto of uh, uh, the party and the plans of the gubernatorial candidate of our party, Dr. Abdullah Aziz Olajide Adedino, which, of course, he will reveal and uh, present to the public very shortly. But you know from day one, Jando has never kept anyone in the dark as regards his program for Lagos State. His intention is to offer a breath of fresh air and turn around governance in the state. You know, what we have had in the last 23 years is obvious. Even the, the blind could see that this is not the best that our state could have. And so, his, his, his Excellency Dr. Abdulaziz Olajida Adidino Jando is focusing on all the areas of governance to make life better for the people of Lagos State. And like you mentioned, he has great passion for taking development around Lagos State. Lagos State is not just about uh, Ikoyi or the Highland or a part of Ikeja. It's about the entire divisions of the state. It's about making Lagosians feel the wealth beyond earning but to physically enjoy, enjoy development. And so that is what the manifesto will speak to regarding provision of housing for Lagosians across the five divisions, regarding provision of quality education across the five divisions, regarding, I mean, uh, roads and maintenance and, and rehabilitation of roads and opening of new roads across the five divisions, ensuring that we enhance healthcare delivery across the five divisions so that wherever you are, whether you are in Badagri or in Epe or in Kurudu or in Ikoyi or Victoria Island or in Banana uh, Island, you know for sure that you are in Lagos. And there will be no need for people to unnecessarily migrate within the state just to area where they feel that there is concentration of development. So very shortly, there will be a public presentation of the manifesto of Jando. Let's talk about um, the challenges that lie ahead of um, Ade Duran and his campaign. Um, like I said at the beginning, the dust has settled on he picking uh, a movie star um, 
and a female business mogul as his running mate. But now, let's talk about the nitty gritties. What are the challenges that you hope to surmount with this campaign? Now, you've talked about roads and you've talked about you know, infrastructural development. Um, now, many people would say that there are so many things that the APC government has done. But what are those things that you think that you need to first tackle if you were given the opportunity to become uh, you know, the ruling party? What are the first phases of things that you um, apply yourself to? Well, well, thank you so much. Um, a section of um, uh, the populace in Lagos State may allude to the fact that uh, the APC government haven't been uh, in power for uh, 23 years, has done a bit uh, of things. But if you look around, you will see a huge gap between what should be and what is existing. Look at the issue of road that we mentioned. Where are the roads in Lagos? These are just reality. Go to the interland, go around Lagos. What you just need is few hours of rain, and you will hardly be able to move around Lagos. Recently, a video is going viral regarding the experience of people around the Bejuleki local government, precisely Aoyaya area. They said consistently over the years they have been having this challenge. That whenever there is a little rain, there will be total gridlock within that axis. And it's not limited to them. Come around now, just as we speak now, move around Lagos and you see. And you see the challenge, you see the, the terrible state of infrastructure in Lagos State. Now, Jando is bringing a human face to governance. He is a Lagosian and he knows the state um, but like the back of his, of his hands. And so we are going to correct right from the scratch the deficiency that we have observed in the area of governance is a major concern to Jando. And num num number one, principally, is that even the governor of the state will not take decision on his own. He needs a second level of approval. That is the first thing to correct. No matter how good a governor could be, as long as he's from APC, he would be unable to perform because there is a power behind the scene that dictates what you. What do you mean by so there's? The a, what do you mean by there's a power behind the scene? What power are you making reference oh, to? And who could this person? Because it is be? obvious that there is a godfather. There is a godfather in Lagos State who dictates how Lagos should be run. The same godfather that, 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 that worked with Fashola, the same godfather that insisted that Ambode must succeed Fashola, the same godfather that pulled out Ambode out of the system, the same godfather that have put us into the problem we are having now by forcing the, 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 the clueless and inept government of Sanwolu on Lagos State. It is, it is common knowledge, it is a public knowledge that the great problem of Lagos State is beyond bringing a good candidate for APC is about bringing a man who can hit the ground running, who will see where he needs to attend to the needs of the people, and he will go ahead and do it without necessarily waiting for an approval. Okay. And hand to that dynasty. Okay. That, that is key. The moment that is done, the people may the need of the people. All right. Let's talk about some um, allegations that your governorship candidates made um, recently. He talked about the fact that, in fact, he accused the Lagos State government of pulling down campaign posters. He uh, also accused the um, Lagos State Signage and Advertisement Agency. Uh, he allegedly said that they threatened two <clears throat> companies that he was using uh, for his campaign posters to bring down those posters. Now, of course, you know that the Lagos State government uh, has come out to deny these claims. But I ask you, why would the Lagos State government, knowing that Lagos is, of course, a, 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 a cosmopolitan city and, of course, a state that is not necessarily just a state for a certain group of people, it's a state for everyone, why would the Lagos State government want to do that and tell 
companies to take down posters of a different political party other than theirs? Oh, you know that the Lagos State uh, government is G3. The uh, opposition has never been this uh, ready to wrestle power from APC. I am a member of the People's Democratic Party for years, and I know that every election year we the alternative, the better alternative to Lagosians. We have never been this intentional. We have never been this deliberate. Jandro has brought a breath of fresh air into the PDP has presented itself to the voting public as the better alternative. And the ruling party is feeling the heat. And so the best way they feel they could uh, nip this in the board is to stop the APDP from having visibility. It's just as simple as that. And it's because they have such can. And you know, it is not peculiar to Lagos APC. They did the same thing in the in the last election, they did not allow the national state to have visibility. They even stopped the party from using the, 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 the state owned stadium for its campaign. The party had to go to the road so the campaign. But of course, so what happened? That all these shenanigans did not stop the will of the people. So, whatever APC in Lagos State tries to do, we not and we are to nothing. The people have made up their mind that they are changing this government. And so it is, it is obvious that APC felt that visibility via the outdoor and other channels, media channels, is what will give the PDP the strength. But it is beyond that. It is about the resolution of negotiation. It is about the readiness of the electorate. It is about the willingness of the people to change this government. And for the first time, have an independent governor. Have a governor who... They can really call their own governor, a governor they elected, a governor that they can bring them plea to, and a governor that will not just rush out over them. A governor that knows that their vote can't and will be very concerned they want, they want part time. And, 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 and you know, that is what APC would not want to happen. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, it, it, it is, it, it, it's over. It is over. We are just counting days for this government of the APC to, to leave the position. You can, be, you, 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 you can bet that. Let me take you back a bit. You keep talking about the breath of fresh air that your candidate is bringing to Lagos. What constitutes of this breath of fresh air? What exactly is this breath of fresh air? Uh, literally, break it down for us because... I, I'm guessing, and I, I, I'm hoping that I'm speaking for Lagosians, um, this is not, not, no longer a time for rhetorics, but Lagosians want to see something different. So if, if they want to see something different, is this slogan enough or anything for them to go by? Thank you. This is beyond sloganeering. It is about a change in Lagos. Now, average Nigerian believe Lagos is a very rich state. And we always felt it that um, we have a high GR of over 50 billion every month. So Lagos is rich, Lagos is wealthy. But please, you will agree with me that when you enter into the city of Lagos, you cannot feel the wealth. You cannot see the wealth of Lagos. Now, go to other cities you can compare Lagos with, go to Dubai. You need nobody to tell you that Dubai is a wealthy city because the state of infrastructure speaks to it. Now, come to Lagos. What do you see? Do you see a wealthy city? Now, this is, a, this, this is part of the breath of fresh air we talk about. Doing things differently. Go to our education sector. A state like Lagos generating over 600 billion in IGR in a year not to talk of federal allocation and other uh, areas of revenue that comes to the state. You as a Lagosian or a resident of Lagos, will you be proud to take any of your children to public school? You will not. You will not. If you have a choice, you will prefer to go 
for private hospitals when you have an health need. If they cost you and you do not have the confidence in the provision of health care services done by the government. Some time ago, you know, we have issues with the doctors in Lagos complaining about their remuneration. Go to all the hospitals, the state-owned hospitals and the, the, and, the, and the general hospitals. What do you see? You see they have to start. The people have left because of the poor welfare condition of the workers. Wherever you go in Lagos, look at the drainage system. Look at the road infrastructure. Look at the situation of things in Lagos. Point to one area of Lagos that distinguishes the state from other states in Nigeria. You have, or if I will be fair, little or nothing to show for the wealth of Lagos. So the breath of fresh air is making Lagos look feel wealthy, making Lagosians enjoy the wealth of Lagos. Lagos is truly wealthy, but this wealth is in the hand of few people. You are aware of what goes into the hand of Alphabeta every month. You are aware of the resources of Lagos that some individuals have cornered. You are aware of properties that belong to Lagos that have been cornered by individuals. You are aware of what goes to individual pockets from views and taxes of the people. Things will be done on okay. There will be breath of fresh air in every area of our life. Okay. And most especially, you are going to have a governor who is your governor and not an appendage or a lieutenant of okay. an individual sitting in his corner controlling the state. Quickly, I, I, in a few words, I'd like for you to tell us what your plans are for security in Lagos. Now, the Lagos state government, as we know, has banned Okada, um, you know, to, for security reasons. Um, but then there are also those who are calling for clearing of under the bridges, etc., etc. What is the Jandor campaign going to do in terms of security that the Lagos state government has not already done, or to better upon what they're doing right now? Yes, yeah, Jandor has said it over and over that securing the state cannot be left with the government alone. We need to engage the people. And that is why there are a native approach to security of Lagos State. You, you're familiar with this state, and you know that um, there are black spots around Lagos. And there are individuals or group of people we know that have influence within this black spot and, the, and, and what have you. Government, we engage key opinion leaders and influence people, influencers, so to say, in securing Lagos. Now, we're going to ensure that community policing that is being, I mean, agitated for nationwide, which we have flat with the neighborhood that have been created uh, the, the, the current legal state government. But so it, is, it has been done along party lines and having sentiment without necessarily equipping neighborhood guard. And we do this differently. Okay. And then number two, one thing critical security is to ensure that there is provision of jobs and people's means of livelihood is, is protected. Now, look at the volume of Okada riders we have in Lagos, Keke, Nape riders we have in Lagos, who we in the transport sector, look at the volume, and we wake up one day and then we begin to pull these people out of business by taking their means of livelihood. As much as we ensure that security of life and property is a priority to our government. We will also ensure that we will not take a, the means of livelihood of people without providing an alternative. Without providing an alternative. Okay. Because man out of his business, you are already exposing him to crime. You are giving him, you are giving him no alternative than to consider crime 
And so what you save by taking Okada off the road would not be comparable to more problem you have added to the security issue. So therefore, there will be engagement, proper engagement of the people okay. regarding this area. These are residents of Lagos. Okay. Let me quickly talk it's about safe. let me quickly talk about something that recently happened that uh, your candidate got flack for. Now, um, he and his running mate recently visited owners of auctioned vehicles. Now, according to the Lagos State Government, these are traffic offenders. These are people who have committed a crime against the state. And these people's vehicles were taken or impounded. They didn't show up to pick those vehicles, and those vehicles were auctioned. Of course, these are consequences for actions that have already been clearly stated um, as criminal. But then the flag that your candidate is getting for visiting um, these people, the government is saying that um, he's looking for cheap votes. So I'm wondering, why did Jandor visit those people whose vehicles were auctioned? Did he not know that these people uh, had committed offenses against the state? Thank you very much. Um uh, last Thursday, that is uh, 15 September, uh, 134 impounded vehicles were auctioned by the uh, Lagos State government. And um, as Lagosians, we all watched this. Um, uh, we, we, we saw it on air. And two individuals among the 134 people cried for help. They told us their stories, told Lagosians their stories. Now, these two people had serious challenges. Now, Latif Kolako, who was one of the 134, had hypertension and he was sick. He, his, he claimed he gave his boss yeah, to a mechanic who drove one way and the boss was confiscated. But from his, I mean, from sick, from his sick bed, he came to the point of auctioning to appeal to government, and he appealed to the court of public opinion. Of course, they have violated traffic rules. Unduke Osinachi is the second guy. He was arrested for flying one way. He was imprisoned at Badagri prison for three months. While he was in prison, his three-year-old daughter fell sick and died. Two weeks ago, he was released, having spent three months in prison. And he got wind of the auctioning of his vehicle, which he got on air for chase, and is yet to pay. And he came there thinking he would be able to get the vehicle back, but it was auctioned for 450,000 naira. Now, these two individuals were shown it was viral on the social media, calling for help. Now, Jando has not gone to these people to condone indiscipline. And he said it over and over and over again. But you look, there is something with. Look, these people have appealed to Lagosians. These people have called for help. The first thing Jando did at Mushi, when he got to Mr. Latif Kolako, is to want to, 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 to lampoon him again. That how could you have allowed that to be done? But whatever you have done, you have been punished. But we cannot allow you to remain hopeless. We need to offer you hope. You have made a mistake and you have been punished. We will not allow your means of livelihood to go. Most especially the man was even still on medication as at the time we visited him. The same thing with Osinachi. Osinachi and the mother in the area of Lagos plead for negotiations to come to their rescue. He still have a standing to pay on that bus, and he has lost his daughter, and he's calling for help. Look, we are not closing our eyes to the fact that they have violated traffic rules, and they have been punished. But should we allow them to go into depression? Should we not offer help to people who need help? Even state government offer prerogatives. I mean, they have prerogative of mercy. You offer state pardon to but, people. But, but, but if you're, are if, you're in prison. If, if what you're saying is anything to go by, if you're offering some form of succor to these two people, 
What happens to the rest of exactly. them? If you're, if you are, if Jandor is doing this for two people, why can't he do that? I mean, is he ready to do that for the others? Because again, the truth is, it remains that these people committed an offence, and they had to go down for it. Now, according to the government, these vehicles were not reclaimed, and hence the reason why they were auctioned off. So where were they when these vehicles were asked to be reclaimed? So. Again, I, I appreciate the I, fact that I, he's I trying sure. to do good, but if you must do good to two, why can't you extend the, sa extend the same good to the others who no, also no. committed a crime and have done their time and their cars are also maybe being auctioned? I, may, I'm sure if we were to listen to everybody's again. story, they all have a story, no, don't no, they? No, 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 no. Can you get it? We said 134 people were involved. We had it on the social media on record. These two individuals, a man of over 50 years, crying like baby, seeking for help. Osinachi is a young guy of maybe about 40 years thereabout, crying that he has lost his child. These are the two people that cried for help, seeking for assistance from Lagosians. This is on record. Gandor was not looking around for 134 people who have violated traffic offense. No! He was not even interested in condoning that. He, he will never do that. I, I can recollect he said it on head. Your colleagues, um, uh, media men were there. That look, when I emerged as governor, that's Jando. He said, when he emerged as governor, May 29, 2023, he will ensure that traffic offenders are punished. So he has no sympathy for you for committing offense and for being punished. For you have cried for help. Your means of livelihood is lost. There's need to take care of you. You still have your children to take care of. So there's need to ameliorate your condition. And so those two people cried for help and Jandor helped them. And look, in addition to this, the government of Jandor will punish offenders but will not take the means of people's livelihood. That is clear. And every obnoxious law that does not care whether people perish as long as you want to govern will be reviewed. That is clear. It is clear. Negotiations need government with human face. The Andor government will not hesitate to take hard decisions to make sure that the states run properly. But it will also accommodate the people because it is in government for the people. It is the government of the people. And so as much as we ensure order and the legal egalitarianism, we will also ensure there is empathy. Empathy. And that is what Sanwolu's government lacks. That is what this government lacks. You will just shut down a market just because some few individuals violate government regulations. Not minding that there are thousands of people whose livelihood is attached to what they make daily from the market. That is, that is wicked. That is insensitive. And look, go and check the number of people who are found culpable of these offenses belongs to the downtrodden members of the public. They are cronies will never be treated this way. Please, you are aware that a building collapsed in Victoria Island recently and six people died in that building. The chairman of the agency in charge of this said it to the public that the owner of that property refused to obey the law. On three occasions, they sealed that building for this fellow who owns that that the, this, this crony of government who owns that property violated the law of the land. See, today, nothing has been done. We do not know that individual. Nobody cares to know because he's a fat pig, he's a fat cow. But if it is a, if it is an average negotiator, you will want him dead and buried. No, Gando will not do that. Gando will ensure that equality before the law is what we practice. The rule of law is fine, but everybody will be equal before the law. We will not pull, we will not use sledgehammer 
to treat the poor why will pamper the rich? No. All right. All right. Mr. Mr. Gomez, Gomez, quickly, because we're almost out of time, I want to ask you some questions. Uh, let's talk about the internal democracy in the PDP right now. The PDP has gone against the APC over the years, and they've never really been able to win that battle. What has changed? And what gives you that, you know, trust and hope that you can surmount this, this particular one come 2023? Again, your your president, your governorship candidate, I beg your pardon, is a former APC member. What exactly does he have that would make him win this election? Again, we know that there had been some uh, frayed nerves within your party. Have those nerves been calmed? Has there been a reconciliation whatsoever? And finally, this is a three-pronged question. That's because we're running out of time. There's a position that we hear that the PDP in Lagos uh, or Jandor's segment of the party uh, seem to have differed with uh, the governor of your state on the situation um, uh, of IU, that's the, chair, the pre chairman of the party, the national chairman. The southern caucus of the PDP has been asking for IU to step down. But I do hear that uh, you have disagreed with Governor McIndy on the resignation of IU. Can you explain to us why that is? All right, thank you so much. What has changed in Lagos this time around is that there is an implosion in the APC. Jando is the convener of the Lagos for Lagos movement, one of the pillars, the pillar structure of the APC in Lagos State. And so Jando leaving APC to come to PDP is like taking a quarter of the strength of APC in Lagos into PDP. And you are aware that over the years, every election year, PDP will score up to 30 to 40 percent of the vote in every election. Though we know APC rigs the election, but this time around, we have about 25 percent of the strength of APC in Lagos, joining with 40 percent of PDP to have the majority. Now, Funke Akindele's factor is also coming into it. And now, please permit me to correct: there is no gender faction or Jandor part in Lagos PDP. Lagos PDP is united. Lagos PDP is Well, I'll, I'll tell you why I asked that. Because Chief Body George, who is a, a senior and elder um, statesman within the PDP, is one of those who are asking that the, the national chairman steps down, res resigns, so that, and, and he said this is in the interest of the party. But then it looks, like, to say this. But it looks like Sorry, some please. section of the party seems to differ on this particular matter. Hence my question. Look, um, the issue of uh, the call for designation of our national chairman is not a Lagos politics. Look, it is, it is beyond Lagos state. And thus far, Dr. Abdulaziz Olajide Adediron Janjo does not take side on this matter at all. Likewise, key leaders of the party in Lagos State. Chibola Bode George is not a Lagos leader of PDP. He is a national leader. So when he speaks, he speaks to the interest of the Southwest or some people as he perceives it. And you see, him, that is the, the beauty of PDP. PDP is not draconian. PDP is not authority. It is a party of the people. You are allowed to hold your view. The majority are allowed to have their way, and the minority their say. And that is the beauty of PDP. And so there is no division as far as the party is concerned. Every individual has their own view on why the national chairman should remain or should, should leave. But what everybody has unitedly agreed to is that the former Vice President Atikwa Bubabka is the most qualified and competent candidate for the 2023 presidential election. And by the grace of God, he's going to win. And all the party leaders, including Chief Olabode George, including Governor Ieson Wike, including Governor uh, um, Makinde Sheyi Makinde, and all other party leaders will unite to ensure Atiku is elected. And that is what is most important. Whatever you are hearing is just internal party politics. It's just about interest and it is it has nothing to do with faction or division. The chairman of Lagos PDP 
is Honorable Philip Iboji. Everybody agrees with him. The party candidate is Jando. Dr. Abdelaziz Olajide Adedino, everybody agrees to it. Are you still there, Mr. Gunaye? I think that we lost that conversation. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be wrapping things up. Stay with us. It's still plus politics, and we have been speaking on the Jando campaign, of course, gubernatorial campaign here in Lagos, which is of the Lagos State People's Democratic Party. Binga Gunleye is the spokesperson of that campaign. Now, Mr. Gunleye, before we went on that break, you were still trying to tell us about um, what your party is or the, the position of your candidates on what on the issues of the national um, chairman being asked to resign. Now, you're saying that you're Candidates is sitting on the fence on this particular matter. I wonder why. Well, there, there is even no fence as regards this matter. What I actually said was that it is not an issue. It is just about in, in interest of individuals. And but but, but the, Southern caucus, only... the Southern Caucus of the People's Democratic Party also consists of the Southwest. And like I said, um, if this is something that borders around the interest of the people in the South, which also means Lagos State, why should your candidate say, well, it's a national matter, it shouldn't concern me? Oh, what is the interest of the South? Look, there is no consensus so far as regards what the interest of the South is. But, but, but what is important is that the People's Democratic Party in Southwest Nigeria is interested in winning the election in 2023. And please note, whether what, whatever side of the divide anyone belongs, the, the interest is to win. Some people feel that if the Southwest has the national chairmanship, it, it brightens our chances of winning. Some people, the other side feels that if you remove the chairman now, it will affect our interest of winning. So you can see that we are on the same page. Our interest is about winning the election. And that is the concern of Dr. Abdelaziz Olajide Adedino. We need to win the election come 2023 at the federal level and in Lagos State. And that is our primary uh, 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 objective for now. And that is our focus. But we will not stop anyone who have interest to express themselves. That is the beauty of PDP, and you see that some individuals came up to say, look, don't distract Vice President Adikwa Bubakad, former Vice President, because the campaign is getting into full swing. Look at his visit to Lagos, look at the massive reception, look at the love he has been shown across the country, look at the, the, the volume of of, of, of uh, people coming into the PDP in the northern Nigeria. Look at the massive support he's also getting in the south. Look, he has won the election even before the election day. We are only counting days. And that is what is important to us as a party. But we will not shut others down. If this happens in APC, you know what will happen. They will victimize everyone who does not agree with the opinion of the Godfather. They will want to take them out of the party. For PDP, we being democratic, we allow people to have their say. So our interest is to win the election, and we will continue to accommodate every interest and tendencies to make sure that we are united and we prosecute the 2023 election as a united front. And that is what is important to us. Give us a few weeks. All this is usually about resignation or no resignation. We fizzle out. Only one thing will be important. How do we continue to convince the Nigerian electorate that PDP is the government in waiting? PDP 
is the alternative, the best credible alternative. How do we continue to, 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 to retain the goodwill we enjoyed thus far? How do we continue to motivate people to keep up alive that the few months they will still need to endure this inept and clueless government of APC is worth waiting because the light that is at the end of the tunnel is motivating enough that Nigeria will be better and Lagos will heave a sigh of relief when the government of Jando, Dr. Abdulaziz Olajide Debiro, is installed come okay. May 29, 2023. Great. Um even though we know that the campaigns have not started in earnest uh, as everybody's looking and waiting for the 28th of this month. But um, it, we know that the, there's a responsibility for political parties, not just INIC, not just the National Orientation Agency, which is half past dead, um, to um, have some level of voter education. Mostly this onus is on political parties. You're the ones who are asking for votes. How much voter education is the People's Democratic Party undertaking? Again, there has been this PVC drive on social media uh, for people to go and register. Now that the registration is done, INEC is cleaning up these registers. Is there any push by political parties, including your political party, for people to go pick up these PVCs? Because we know, you and I know, that that is the only way they can actually get gain access to voting and voting for whoever they decide to vote for. What is the PDP doing in that regard? We have a system in place. While the continuous voters registration was on, of course, we mobilized massively our members, and most especially members of the public who over the years have lost interest in voting, especially in Lagos State. We ensured that they were mobilized to register and get their PVC. The volume of Lagosians who have never voted before that register within that period are quite, quite significant. So and we are sure that come 2023 February and March, they will vote the PDP. Now, what we do now, we have 245 words political words in Lagos State. And our structure is spread across all the world to the zone, to the polling unit in Lagos State. And so we ensure, we are working around to ensure that everyone who registered, who are party members, get their PVC. And then we are going, taking it down door to door to non-party members, who of course are the majority. The non-party members are the majority. So we are taking it, we are taking the evangelism down to them. That the first phase of this exercise has been completed. Now is the second phase. Go collect your PVC. And we continue to do that until the campaign kick up. And even during the campaign, we will continue to still remind them. And of course, we follow up data by data, street by street, house by house, person by person, to ensure that the right thing is done. Look. It is a big deal that Lagos must be free. It is a big deal that Lagos must be rescued. No, Lagosians cannot afford another four years of this. Oh, this calamity. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't imagine Lagosians passing through this agony again. No, it will not happen. And from the feedback, from the force of the people that we have felt, people are anticipating change. They are willing, they are ready, and they have the ability. And the ability is their PVC. Okay. So look, the APC are counting days. They know that their end has come, the end of okay. this dynasty. I think that Lagosians would, that will be left to Lagosians to decide. Campaigns have not started yet. But I want to say thank you. Benga Gunle is the spokesperson, Jandor Gubernatorial Campaign Council for Lagos State's People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you, Plus TV. All right. Well, that's it on the show tonight. But before I go, I will give you my take. Stay with us. Now, according to the philosopher Plato, no system of government can be perfect as long as humans are part of that system. That same can be said for any man-made system. 
Now, when it comes to political systems, however, democracy is the strongest option that we have. It promises the respect of every individual's voice and self-governance with the people bringing more important, uh, being more important, I beg your pardon, than the leaders. Unfortunately, the spotlight that democratic system shines on our leaders only seems to offer their worst sides. In a system that requires party politics to offer us choices in leaders, our applicants to the most important jobs in the country only ever demonstrate the most selfish and egotistical sides to their nature. They constantly fail to even reach a consensus on their own candidates. They're incapable of even following their own party constitutions or even the rally for a common cause of the party. Now, when such people seeking to represent our interests cannot rise above you know, their own personal greed to put party over self-glorification, how can we ever hope that they can put our country over themselves? I'm Mary Anacone. Thanking you for watching. Have a good evening.